Hello and welcome. I'm Brooke Brown from Teach Outside the Box. Welcome to STEM Bins 101, where we are going to dive into all of the ins and outs of how to implement STEM Bins effectively in your elementary classroom. So whether you are brand new to STEM Bins, you maybe have heard of them and you're considering implementing them in your classroom, or you have been using them in your classroom for many years like I have, I hope you're gonna find some tips and tricks in these videos that can make them as enriching as possible for your elementary kiddos. So if you've never heard of STEM bins before, STEM bins are simple, hands-on, play-based engineering tasks for elementary kids. And STEM bins are simply bins that are filled with an engineering material of your choice. And when I say an engineering material of your choice, I mean literally anything that your kids can create with. So if you are a mom or a teacher, you know that kids are gonna create with whatever we happen to put in front of them. One of the main things my students love to create with are math manipulatives. And one of the first things I noticed when I became a teacher is that regardless of what material we were using, my kids were going to find a way to create with it. They were going to find a way to build with it. And math manipulatives were something that I already had on hand in my class. So when you're thinking about pattern blocks, you're thinking about dominoes, linking cubes, base 10 blocks, you most likely think of those in your math block, but they're also amazing engineering tools. So not only that for STEM bins, but your kids can also use just simple arts and crafts materials that you have lying around. So your Play-Doh and toothpicks, your foam balls and toothpicks, your index cards and tape, um, let's see, mini cups, anything that you happen to have lying around are wonderful learning tools for your kids to use with STEM bins. So your kids have a STEM bin, and then they also have task cards with photos of real world structures to inspire their creations. And this provides a little bit more of a challenge because your kids have to use only the materials that are in the STEM bins to create that particular structure. Now, of course, I always encourage them to make their own inventions. That's one of their favorite things to do. And that's gonna encourage a lot of creativity in your students. But this is gonna provide more structure to really help them dive a little bit deeper into that engineering design process by giving them a constraint and a specific material. So I created STEM bins because of course I noticed my kids playing with math manipulatives. I wanted to turn it into something that was more of a targeted engineering tasks. And more importantly, I wanted them to have the opportunity to engineer through play. Early childhood teachers, mamas know that we need to infuse play into our curriculum now more than ever. And this is a perfect developmentally appropriate way to infuse it into your existing curriculum. I also wanted to provide a hook or a motivator for my spatial learners and my kinesthetic learners because so much of our instruction does not cater to that specific type of hands-on instruction. I'm gonna show you all different ways to put STEM bins all throughout your curriculum and really cater to those specific types of learners. So you may be wondering how I put my STEM bins kits together, so I'm gonna give you a couple of different options for how you can do that. So these over here, I like to call the DIY model or the do-it-yourself model. This is a download on Teachers Pay Teachers and I will put links to all of these in our descriptions. This is going to be a model that you will print yourself. You will put your labels onto school boxes. Now these are gonna be sold at Walmart, Target, any sort of craft supply store. I got these for 99 cents during a back to school kind of time in the summertime. You adhere the labels to the front of the bins, either using scotch tape or using Velcro dots to put them on. This pack is also going to include all of your task cards that you cut apart. You're going to put them, I usually put them on rings of six so that they're easily accessible to your students. It's also going to include some written components that I will show you in just a little while. So this version is also going to have editable templates where you can add your own labels, just copy and paste the materials you'd like to include in your stem bins. It's gonna have editable task cards. It also has a French translation, a Spanish translation, and a STEAM version. If you are a school that really prefers the STEAM model, adding that art into your acronym. So this is one of the options that you have for putting together your stem bins. Now let's say you don't have a lot of these materials on hand in your classroom already. Maybe you don't have very many math manipulatives or engineering tools in your class. This model is a ready-made all-in-one box kit. And these are sold through Hand to Mind. There are two different options for purchasing. There's a comprehensive kit with 16 bins and an essential kit with 12 bins. Now this is gonna have everything you need. It's gonna have all the materials. It's gonna have the labels already adhered on the front of the boxes. It's gonna have all of your task cards already cut apart, 
hole punched, ready for you to put on rings. So this is gonna be more of your time-saving option for sure with an all-in-one solution for putting together your stem mints. Now included in both kits, you're gonna have some writing components that are optional, but really help extend the engineering design process and kind of extend that enrichment period for your kids with stem bins. So beyond just the task cards and the building, I also have three foldable booklets that your students can record their knowledge. This one is called My Stem Bins Inventions, so they can invent their own creations. I also have My Stem Bins Creations. This is great for the little ones. They simply draw what they create and they write a description that goes with it. And then I have a stem bins design process. Simple foldable booklets to help them extend their knowledge. They can record blueprints and they can talk about how they improved their designs. Also included in your kits, you're going to have challenge yourself cards. And this is going to take your kids a little bit further in that engineering design process beyond just the building. This is encouraging them to improve their structures and to make their structures useful. This is also perfect for your kids when they are creating their own inventions. So we have writing prompts that you can put into literacy centers so your kids can write descriptive paragraphs, they can write procedural paragraphs, they can even make an original story involving their STEM bins. These are appropriate for all elementary levels, K okay? all the way through fifth grade. Wonderful way to extend that writing. And then I have writing templates with a variety of lines for all of the different grade levels for you to choose from. So you may be wondering what is it going to look like when my kids are creating with stem bins. So you can see here I've got some different structures that I have built using the specific task cards that are included in the kit. But the beauty of stem bins, guys, is that they are completely interchangeable. So your kids can choose any bin, any task card, and create anything, which means they very rarely get tired of using stem bins and they beg to use them all year long, which that is, could be the best teacher's gift ever, to have something that is already in place, that is engaging for our kids all year long, and then they're never going to get tired of. So these are some different inventions. We have a rope, uh, let's see, there's a rocket out of Magformer bricks. We've got a bridge out of Kiva planks, a box out of index cards and tape, and a tent out of popsicle sticks and Velcro. And you can already guess that some of these structures are very difficult to create using only one material. And that's really where that high level thinking is going to come in for our kids. So those are the basics of stem bins and I hope are going to get you excited for maybe considering to try stem bins in your class. If you're interested in some innovative ways to use stem bins in your classroom, check out my next video with my top five ways to implement them in your classroom.